what brought me to start a new way of life reentry project for women coming out of prisons and jails was my own personal experience of cycling in and out of the prison system for over 15 years, uh, being sentenced to prison, not offered any reentry services or services for my substance abuse um, uh, problem. Um, once I found services that helped me to address my substance abuse, grief, and trauma, um, I healed and was on my way. I thought back about how long I had been tied to the criminal justice system and how effective and humane treatment and therapy had, had been for me and wondered why it hadn't been offered years, even decades before. So um, realizing that, I thought of all the other women who are incarcerated, who are traveling in and out of prisons without any hope, without any safety, without any support upon their release and said, I, I can do that. And so I started um, a New Wave Life Reentry Project and has since helped over 500 women make that transition, reunited uh, over 100 children with their mothers, uh, started one of the largest, started the largest reentry clinic for people to clear up their criminal histories in Los Angeles County uh, and uh, have a leadership development course that helps uh, people, women, become leaders in their community, understanding what it means to be a leader, how to be a leader, how to make policy, how to stand up, how to navigate systems, and uh, to explore uh, themselves. Um, there was a church called FAME, First AME, and they had a transportation program. After about seven or eight months of running the organization, or just at that point, seven or eight months of starting the house, then I was running out of money. And I had used my own money to start the organization after working uh, as a caregiver for a year. And um, uh, Usually I would take uh, one of the residents, one of the women to an appointment, or I would give them money. Um, I think bus fare was $3 in, and I was running out of $3, and our finances was getting low, so I went to FAME and asked them to be a part of their transportation program. And they said I had to be a 501c3. And I said, what's a 501c3? And they said a nonprofit organization. And so I set on a course to file the 501c3 papers. And someone stepped up and said, I'll help you. And um, we did the um, state incorporation. And then I fumbled through the federal incorporation. And on Christmas Eve, the 501c3 letter came, uh, Christmas Eve of 2000. So that's how I got to be a 501c3. The motivation was bus tokens. Well, I just knew that people needed a place to come back to in the community and that if I could help them come back, it would be good. Uh, if, and also, I wanted to make my life useful. I wanted to do something that would help. And um, I set on the course to do it. I didn't think about an elected official. I didn't think about city or county programs. Uh, I know that I had tried to access programs as a um, as a, a needer of services, and they always ran a little short of what I needed. There was it would always be um, gatekeepers that would not let you through the gate, or by the time you got through the gate you would just feel so um, uh, discouraged and hassled when it wasn't necessary. So I just wanted a place where I could say, hey, come on, come on in, you're welcome, um, you fit, you know, no, I'm not a whole bunch of requirements, not a whole bunch of re um, uh, red tape, not a, not a whole bunch, just a, a home that was safe, 
drug and alcohol free that could provide a place for a person to rest and get up from and go about their day. In the beginning, I thought I could do everything. And um, I guess to the beginning to share the role of the ro different roles and responsibilities of the organization and delegate different tasks and to let go of the reins and trust that the uh, mission could be fulfilled through not only me, but other people. So sharing the um, roles and the projects of a new way of life. I guess that was a, a big thing for me to uh, let go, let somebody else feed the baby. <laughs> I think the more that the public becomes informed about solutions, that they will be more open to understanding there is something we can do other than um, keep incarcerating people, um, uh, paying for uh, uh, incarceration instead of treatment when incarceration just is a cycle and treatment is the end of making an end, a end to a, a problematic uh, situation with a person that impacts the community. Um, I believe that when people understand that um, uh, uh, prisons are basically um, tools of social control and do not actually enhance public safety, that they will take a different take on what we're doing here. Um, and so I think there's a lot of education to be done on several fronts around the mass incarceration of uh, people, the growing of prisons instead of the building of universities, uh, <clears throat> the um, lack of, um, of school materials in urban communities for children to actually get good learning tools that they are, are on a course of learning and a course of having the supplies available to them to learn, uh, to engage, to take a book home that when you get a learning tool, it belongs to you. It's not on borrow, it's not shabby, uh, it's not you know um, something that can only be used for an hour when you might have to study that book for two to three hours. So. Um, if we could shift monies away from um, incarceration into public, public schools, into parks and recreation, into after school programs, into art programs, you know, into enrichment, then we could sort of probably have a better outcome and engagement for the young men and women who are actually tracked into prisons. They have the prison, school to pipeline prison thing going on. Uh, that's just crazy. We should have school to Harvard going on. <laughs> you know, school to Harvard pipeline happening. You know, school to, yeah, school to Harvard pipeline going, yeah. <laughs> I see a new way of life uh, taking on sort of from, from uh, uh, adolescence to adulthood and uh, you know I've taken it through some adoles the adolescent stages and I believe in leadership. I believe in de developing leadership and passing it on. So what I will be doing over the coming um, few years is developing a new executive director to carry out the mission and carry out um, her thoughts, her insights, her uh, vision uh, for a new way of life. And I believe that more re-entry projects can be and should be developed across the country. And I'll be looking how to support and inspire other folks to start their own little organizations uh, nothing huge, nothing big, but something personal, uh, impressionable, something that 
will uh, uh, allow people to be invited back into their community and have a place that is safe and um, secure for them to um, leap back into the world.